Well, this is my first day that I get to say it. The plot thickens. We're moving through Lent and we're coming to this awful event, the cross of Christ. And we already see the plotting happening. And we'll hear so much of this, but this is a, quite a collection of stories today. And if I had to pick one word that it's all about, it's hate. Hate. The brothers of, of Joseph hated him. He was the baby. He was the favorite of his father. Remember, he got the coat of many colors, or as the Broadway show said, Joseph and his technicolor coat, I think. Um, he was a favorite, and, and in this story, uh, when he catches up with his brothers who are going to do some business, they, talking among themselves, see him coming, and they plot to kill him. And they would have, except that one brother stood up and had a plan to save his brother. So then they decide to throw him in a cistern, but then some uh, Ishmaelites came and they said, ah, let's sell him to them as a slave. All because of hatred and jealousy and, and, um, and a sense of revenge. And in the gospel story, it's similar. It's all about hate, but it's different. Jesus is preaching the kingdom of God and the Pharisees and the scribes and the elders of the temple, they didn't like it. They didn't like his popularity. They didn't like the way that he said things about them that were true. Uh, they loved attention. They loved to be first in the synagogue. They loved all kinds of things, but they didn't really care about people's lives. They weren't merciful. And he let them have it all the time, and they hated him. They hated him. So, just like Joseph, a plot to kill. It's coming, and we know where it ends. But these scriptures are meant for you and me. It's not just to tell a story of the past, because the past never goes away. It's kind of like, you know, they say COVID's never going to go. It's like the flu. It'll come back every year a little differently. We'll be more and more immune to it, but we have to keep getting flu shots and COVID shots probably the rest of our lives. It never goes away. The past doesn't go away. Hatred and jealousies and all those little petty things, they don't go away. So what do we do? You know, have you ever seen those dogs when they have a surgery and then they put a cone on it and they've got this cone around so that they won't, because they're dogs, they'll just do the dog thing and scratch their neck. So they put the cone on. It's kind of cute, some of them, they got this little face. But this cone is meant to help them, to save them. And I guess I'd say that this thing, this church, is our spiritual cone. It's, it's the cone that is supposed to protect us from ourselves. Leave the dog alone, it'll scratch his neck and rip open the wound and die. What will happen to us if we don't get reminders and stories like this that teach us the, the, the terribleness of our sometimes feelings that are filled with hate and revenge and can destroy not only others, but even ourselves, even our very spirit and soul. So, as we continue on Lent, we're only in the second week. We're only in the second week, and we're beginning to look ahead to this. Because this is the ultimate and the climax, and this is the, what the whole story is about. And if we do this Lent well, and through our penances and other practices, we just keep letting go of some of the gook, some of the mess of our lives, we may come to this moment uh, with our eyes wide open, and our hearts wide open, ready to receive all the power and all the glory that comes from that cross.